Hey, everybody, how you doing? This is Pastor Small uh, reaching out. New Calvary Baptist Church Virtual Bible Study. So grateful to share with you uh, tonight. Glad you're able to share with us. Glad you're here. We got a special panel going on here tonight, y'all. Uh, we got some gifted preachers. We got some gifted chaplains and some folk who study and work in human behavior. And tonight we are talking about protecting our peace, how we protect our peace in this season of COVID-19. And we are blessed to have some of the gifted, uh, most gifted uh, associates in this area. I've said it a whole bunch of times. We have been truly, truly blessed here at New Calvary because we've got some of the most talented and gifted associates around. Uh, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves real quick. Um, so we're going to go ahead forward and let them show it off. We're going to start off. Well, let me let you let you know who these are. Uh, some of y'all who don't know, some of you who are watching us uh, virtually in other places. We have our executive pastor, uh, Reverend Byron Harris. He's sharing with us. We have Reverend Dr. Nicole McDonald. She's an associate here, um, and she is associate uh, minister of operational leadership, organizational leadership. Uh, and we have Reverend Sharice Parker Freeman, who is associate minister of worship and arts. And so uh, all of them are preparing uh, or are trained in chaplaincy, and we're blessed today to have them. But we're going to let them introduce themselves a little bit. So we're going to go ladies first, all right, and we're going to let them uh, introduce themselves. <laughs> All right. Good evening, Facebook family and New Calvary family. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us again. Um, as Pastor stated, I'm Reverend Cherise um, Parker Freeman, and I have the pleasure of joining the um, panel tonight. One of the reasons, um, because I was counting the other day and realized that I've been working in healthcare uh, for 15 years. And so dealing with COVID-19, understanding the anxiety that we're dealing with in the community and some of the disparities um, and social determinants around um, healthcare in the Black community, that's what we'll be talking about um, for the next few sessions. And so having a Master of Divinity and Healthcare Administration, just combining those disciplines together um, and hopefully having some great discussions. So send your questions in and let's talk about it. Thank you, Sharice. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Nicole McDonald, and I have been a chaplain since 2007. And primarily, I work with uh, hospice chaplaincy. And so uh, I will be talking about uh, grief, death, and dying during this COVID season, and uh, also about the trauma involved with uh, this COVID season. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is your favorite executive pastor, Pastor B, also known as Byron Harris. I am grateful to be here tonight and excited about being able to share. Uh, as many of you all know, as a part of my journey, I actually worked as a staff chaplain for surgery, trauma, ED, and oncology at Norfolk General Hospital for about five years. And in that space of not only being a part of the College of Chaplaincy, but in the training of getting the units of clinical pastoral education that are needed to be a chaplain, uh, we focused on how to deal with trauma and how to deal with trauma in a in a in a productive way, uh, not to wipe it under the rug, not to just say I'm okay, not to just kind of grin and bear it. But what does it mean to really do the work of being a of processing where you are in the situations that we face and the traumas that we face? Because we face traumas on every day, and the reality of the matter is, it is how we handle those traumas is the how we're able to experience God even the more. Mm -hmm. And so we want to definitely connect that. Um, I've been a part of the New Calvary Baptist Church family for about seven years now, and it has been a growing space for me and a wonderful place that you all have allowed me to grow and share the gifts that God has given me, but also challenged me in places to grow as well. So I'm excited to be a part of the conversation. All right. Well, we're grateful um, for all of us, all of you uh, sharing here. Um, and so we, what you, we want you to do that in the process of what we're doing, um, not only shout us out, hit us with the likes, you know, hit us with the hearts of your loves, but not only if you got some questions, go ahead and shoot those out as well. And we'll try to get to them, um, as much as possible. We may not get to every question, but we'll try to engage and see what we can do, uh, in terms of answering, uh, some of your questions about, uh, peace and stress and anxiety and trauma in this season. All right. So let's just get to it. Um, let's just chop it up a little bit. Um, so let me just throw this first question out here. You know, we're talking about, um, you know, this season and everybody is going through different things and experiencing uh, different things in different ways. Um, and I think what we're seeing, um, particularly right now, 
is the anxiety of the, not the country, right? Um, for a lot of different reasons. And, you know, we can talk about those, but for a lot of different reasons, people are um, under stress and distress for a lot of different things. Um, and some things are as simple as people just want to be out of the house, mm -hmm. right? But then there are other things, you know, economy and things of that nature. So uh, the first question I want to throw out is in what ways have you seen stress being demonstrated by people during this pandemic? How do you, how do you see, you know, the stress, um, you know, being manifested in this, in this, uh, current time? Um, well, I guess I'll start, um, from a healthcare perspective, um, just talking about the dynamics in the African American community. A lot of times our, the ER, the emergency room is our primary care, mm -hmm. you know? And so there are people now who are not going to the ER as much, um, afraid of coming in contact with someone with COVID-19. So there's that anxiety around that. So we'll see, we're seeing the numbers in the ER declining tremendously. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the, the anxiety around um, not having your loved one come to the hospital with you. I have a girlfriend who had a surgery um, a couple of weeks ago, major surgery. Mm -hmm. Her husband couldn't go with her, mom couldn't go. And so, you know, just having to go through that process and navigate that by yourself, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so there are all of these anxieties. My own personal story, my brother called me, my youngest brother, who lives in DC, called me a couple of weeks ago and he was feeling terrible. And he did a telehealth um, appointment with the doctor. She said, oh, it's probably the flu. And so at that point, um, by the next day, he was just like, oh, I feel terrible. I feel really, really bad. And I'm like, okay, you need to have a COVID-19 test, of course. And so I honestly started crying and, you know, I'm talking to my dad and my dad's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, because I know how they treat African-Americans and particularly African-American men. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have someone to advocate for you, a lot of times um, you won't get the test or there are things that you might kind of fall by the wayside. So just having that anxiety around that. And so he didn't have COVID. He didn't have, you know, the coronavirus, thank God. But just having that anxiety around not having the availability for testing, and so there are some of the things that we're seeing around healthcare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll um, co-sign on that. As a bereavement coordinator for a hospice, I'm making phone calls to people who have experienced losses. Mm -hmm. And the phone calls, I'm definitely on the phone longer with people, but with the quarantine, people are uh, isolated. And so that is making the grief much worse where they're not having the contact with families and friends. People aren't coming over, sending the, the food and, you know, the, the normal rituals that we have around death and dying. We're not we're not able to do. So it's uh, definitely impacting uh, people's grief and causing much more stress. And just when I go out to the grocery store, I mean, people have the mask on and everybody's, you know, looking crazy and hard at one another. And, mm -hmm. you know, people are, you know, don't want to touch and don't want to, you know, so, so it's, it's, it's a lot of stress just in everyday life. Yeah, um, it almost breeds a hostility. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I've seen the stress demonstrated uh, as, as Dr. McDonald was talking about, you know, dealing with what's going on in the household and in the family, uh, eating. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're, we're at home, we're, we're stuck in the house, mm -hmm. and so we're gaining the COVID-15. You know, <laughs> right, the right, idea right, is that, right. you know, how is stress being demonstrated? I can't get out, I can't go to the gym, I can't exercise, I'm in the house with people that I love, but I feel stuck with them. Right. And so then that love turns right. into some other anxiety. Right. And so what right. I end up doing is I end up eating a few more chips than I should. I end up Absolutely. going in and, and staying down those Twinkie aisle more than <laughs> right. I should. And so the reality is, I think that's one way that we definitely see the yeah. manifestation of the stress is in how we're eating and how we're handling one another with mm -hmm. you know, in our households as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and you know, the reality is, is that most people are emotional eaters anyway, mm -hmm. you know, right. we start right. off eating emotionally. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I remember when, you know, they were talking about, you know, Hey, you know, we're going to quarantine and this thing was jumping off several weeks ago, almost eight weeks ago now. And I went to the supermarket and like, I called, my wife and I was like, yo, I think I overdid it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was like, you know, it was like all of the, you know, I mean, it was, it was stuff to eat, but it was just like, yeah, we'll eat that. Yeah. We'll take right. care of that. Yeah. We'll, and before you knew it, you know, I was like, yo, almost $300 later, <laughs> right. I'm right. in a right. situation. Right. I was like, oh, but somebody, <laughs> go, but I knew 
Right. Unfortunately, unfortunately, somebody's going to eat it and take right. it or do whatever right. do. Right. Um, and I also think it's a lot about, has a lot to do with education mm. um, about the virus, right? I mean, all those of us on social media and stuff like that, we've seen some crazy Corona mm-hmm. outfits, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> real, like people in plastic bags, yeah, people wrapped up. I mean, like, yo, I mean, we've seen some right. mad crazy right. and, you know, as African Americans, we're always gonna put yeast in it. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. We go. You know what I'm saying? We we just don't do the dance. You know what I'm saying? We add style and flair. We gonna add them to it. So when you know we find ourselves in these kinds of moments, it brings I think that kind of anxiety um, that just brings it to another kind of level. So yeah, I I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, do you guys think um, that the anxieties that people are feeling? Um, are a result of new challenges, you know, um, in terms of the COVID-19? Or are these challenges that have kind of constantly, constantly been there that just showing up in different ways? Like, you know, to your point about healthcare mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So are these just um, issues that we're facing that are just being, un, un, you know, pulled, peeled back and we're seeing some stuff? Or is it really a new thing? I mean, is this really a new thing or did a new thing bring out old issues, you think? Mm-hmm. I think it's a, I think it's the fact that a new thing has brought out old issues mm-hmm. uh, as as people of color as children of the diaspora whenever it happens to the dominant culture mm-hmm. it affects us 10 times more right. and so oftentimes I think that it's a situation where you know they get the cold we get the flu right. you know they get a tickle in their throat we die from the virus it, it, right. there's, and I'm not saying that they're not a dominant culture that has died and been affected by the virus but I think that the issue is a situation where you talk about education as well being a part of that dynamic is that we do not go to the doctor for wellness checks we do not typically as a culture do that as often as we ought to and so oftentimes it ends up amplifying everything else that we experience and so i think it's a situation where there are some old school issues that we have dealt not dealt with as a culture that get exacerbated when something like this takes place absolutely and i think you know when i think about finances So you take somebody, a family who's been living paycheck to paycheck, and now they've just lost a job, which makes the problem even worse. But the real issue is that, you know, they didn't have the savings or they weren't able to put away anything or invest or kind of create that nest egg. Uh, So the pandemic just made everything worse. Right. Right. Um, I would say, you know, to both of your points, um, there's a crisis before the crisis, mm-hmm. you know, and so there's always been issues with access to health care. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, always there have been issues in terms of, you know, African-Americans historically um, being the guinea pigs, mm-hmm. so to speak, mm-hmm. you know, or, or in actuality. Um, and so having that fear that we have not dealt with. And so now you have um, a president in office who's like, oh, you know, blacks are dying. Oh, I don't like it. But the, the problems have always existed. This is not this is not new. I think the question becomes, what do we do about it? Right. So w- what is going to be the change um, and, and what's going to be the driving force that we really see more, you know, community health centers in our, you know, in our communities, more doctors. And the reality is most of our providers don't look like us. Mm-hmm. And so we don't know how to navigate that when we go in to to talk to someone or like I said, you know, you're going in the doctor's office by yourself. So you don't know that maybe you need to record that conversation, you know, and have someone in your family or someone that you trust kind of explain it to you. You know, right. what is what is the doctor saying and having that conversation? And so there have been many problems um insurance plans there there's just been problems a, mm-hmm. across the board and now we're seeing it even more but it doesn't catch us by surprise of course mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um reverend reverend stephen harris asked the question as children of god um should we be equipped or should we equip to handle covid-19 differently um do we have you know does faith fall into um the operation and the factor of of what it is we do um, you know, I, I saw him set, shoot the question and I was trying to wait to get to the face stuff, but you know, being as he asked it, um, you know, why not jump in? Um, so, I mean, do you think, um, I mean, because I, and I guess from, from that perspective, do you see, um, 
more spirituality in people who weren't as spiritual before? I mean, are you all noticing that? Are you seeing that? Um, I mean, are people talking more about spirituality now? Um, you know, mortality will will bring God into a, right, a, a, right, a situation. Right, you know, right. um, you know the finite mm-hmm, of right. you know uh, of you know mm-hmm. uh, of our being. Mm-hmm. You know, we can get real. You know, you know. I mean, I think I think the thing that trips me out. I think the one that trips me out is um, you know, and no 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 shade to you know. I guess this perspective with theology, but folk. I, I get so tickled nowadays because people are like, well, we show I in the last and evil day. Right. <laughs> you know what right. I'm it's right. like, yo, you know, now right. we've been in the last days for the last right. 2,000 right. years. Right. But, you know, it's that that's the one that gets me. You know, the, the, the we COVID show plague, I in the last. The COVID plague. Yeah. Right. 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 I mean, so what do you guys think in terms of, you know, uh, faith and, and how, you know, people are dealing it faithfully? I mean, um, you know, how you how you running into it? Well, I, I'll speak from from my job. We are talking about it more mm-hmm. about God and that perspective, uh, because so many people have family and friends that are in Chicago who had COVID and who are recovering, and right. so there's more conversations with God language, mm-hmm. which we didn't have before. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I always struggle with shoulds. Mm-hmm. particularly when it comes mm-hmm. around spirituality, mm-hmm. how you should respond. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes we will get into spiritual cliches, right. which as chaplains, we know do not benefit the culture. Right. Uh, they do not benefit the experience, you right. know, right. Uh, particularly around death. And I'm sure Nicole has experienced it, but you know, someone will die and they'll, we'll say those things. You know, the Lord don't put you no more on you than you can bear. Right. Or right. you love right. them, but God loved them bad. Right. So, right. you know, it's, right. and, and we're not dealing with the pain and the grief of the change. And so I think that in a Sunday school Bible study perspective, yes, we should be able to deal differently with this virus than other persons who let's say are not connected in a spiritual way. The reality is our humanity does not allow us to, because at the end of the day, we're dealing with the same, the same life forces that everybody else is dealing with. So not to oversimplify it, but I think to the point of Dr. Harris's question, I think that we do have tools mm-hmm. that are different mm-hmm. as if, let's say, and not to get a screw, we don't grieve as those who do not have hope. Right. right. Because we understand that we're connected to a savior. We have a redeemer. We have someone who's on our behalf. Right. The reality is it still doesn't, uh, it doesn't adjust the fact that we're affected by the same Absolutely. things that everybody else is affected sure, by. Sure. And I think that's, right. that's that we're, that we're still right. feeling. Right. We're right. still you know, feeling. Right. 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 And because, and, you know, some kind of way when we, you know, we read the scriptures and interpret it, we forget that David was lamenting, right. you know, right. that Jesus right. cried for Lazarus in some right. type of way. We, we forget all about right. that. And Jeremiah so we, got a whole book. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. Some kind of way we gloss over that right. and we throw out these scriptures like, you know, um, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Well, I'm fearful today. Right. Right. And it's okay. Right. And it's, okay to to be a, it's okay for me to be fearful I'm because scared. I don't know if my job is gonna throw me. Right. You know, and, right. and that's and that's real, right. you know. And right. so we gotta not over spiritualize it, right. um, right. but know that, you know, that there is a place to have those exactly. feelings. Right. And I, yeah. I think the quarantine is forcing some Christians. Christians mm. and others who believe to sit yeah. and wrestle, yeah. whereas other crises happen and, you know, we just go on about yeah. our business, yeah. but yeah. the isolation, the in your house, yeah. you know, you're, yeah. you're kind of forced to yeah. think about yeah. some, yeah. you know. This is, this is a different kind of, this is a different kind of faith walk, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, because when something happens to you, right, I say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Or and then we mm-hmm. come and gather. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Hear, you know, inspirational word. We hear inspirational singing. Right. We hear we we on this fellowship. Somebody may pray for us. But now everything has been so isolated. Right. And not only has it been isolated, but everybody's right. affected by the Everybody. same thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's creating right. this different kind mm-hmm. of faith walk. Right. right. So right. Um, can you really, can, I mean, you could talk about, you know, right. Lord help me to hold out, right? right? right. But when I get furloughed, right, right mm-hmm. and everybody's furloughed, right, right, right. 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 can I hold out, right. 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 right? And, or when, you know, you start to really look at, well, you know, this person is still working, but, you know, I'm mm-hmm. waiting for a check. Right. right. <laughs> you know. that I can't even get through. Right, right. 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 That's a whole different, yeah. that's a whole different right. kind of thing. And right. I think, 
what's I think what's really happening is that the rubber is meeting the road mm-hmm. in terms of faith with people mm-hmm. right, in a very real way to where it's much more than a cursory, you know, I come Sunday, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But now I believe folks are seeking God, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. I, you know, I, mm-hmm. I want to know, I, you know, I'm, I'm chasing, right. you know, mm-hmm. right. you know, I, I want, I want God, to, I, God to tell me mm-hmm. what this right. is, right. 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 you know what right. I mean? Yeah. Right. And you yeah. know, it's yeah. more, than, it's, right. it's more than just the cliche, right? Because mm-hmm. the cliche, right. and you know, we kind of we do this at New Calvary. The cliche doesn't work, right? Right. 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 Right being, uh, what ways do you see peace being threatened in this COVID-19 uh, era? Do you think people are coming to terms with the new normal or do you think people are resisting change? Do you think, you know, people are like, you know, yo, this is the way this is going to be or you know, people are like, nah, you know, I'm really mm-hmm. resisting this. I'm not fighting this. I'm not going to go down. I remember uh, the other day I was entering, I was going into the jail and, you know, I was in the parking lot and everybody was going into the jail with a mask on. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, this is it. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, this is happening. Like, you know, I'm putting a mask on before right. I walk in. I was like, like, right. Yeah. I was like, yo, like, this is like, everybody is walking around right. with a mask. Like it's normal. Like yeah. it's normal. Right. right. Like there right. used to be a time where somebody walk around with a mask. He was like, Oh, what right. thing? What they? What's going right. on? Right. Like, right. 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 right, But I mean, so do, what do you do? You think that um, it's threatening, you know, folk in a way where they're kind of resisting, or do you think they're like, no? Oh. And, and do you think that has something to do with their peace and their anxiety and and the sense of trauma they're feeling? I, I think when we talk about a new normal, I think that it's almost a thing where you're seeing people embrace it, even those who are saying that they're not embracing it, they're also embracing it. I had a colleague of mine who has is like anti COVID-19. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to social distance. I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to do anything. And then when we were talking about creating a protocol for the church, they were able to call and give all these ideas. Mm-hmm. We can sit every other row. We can gauge. And I'm like, so your mindset, even mm-hmm. though you're saying you're not, you really are in a space where you are adjusting to the new normal. Right. Oftentimes I think about 9-11, mm-hmm. how that changed the way we as America traveled. Wow. You exactly. know, because again, when you travel to other countries before 9-11, they always had armed security. They always yeah. had, and that was just normal. Right. We didn't do that in America. Mm-hmm. Once right. 9-11 happened, all of a sudden mm-hmm. it just changed. And I think this is one of those 9-11 moments where right. we will never be the same as we were prior to mm-hmm. This and this is going to be the new normal. Wearing the mask, being mindful of the six feet. Um, when someone's walking down the aisle towards you, you step back, you know, to give them the space to get past you. All of that stuff that we were not conscious of prior, I think, is going to be a part of what the new normal is. And I think it's a place of finding resolve, even in the anxiety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If, if, there, right. if there's a such thing. Right. Well, I, I was going to say that I think when I think about the word embracing mm-hmm. the new norm, I think. Embracing depends on your level of privilege. Mm-hmm. That if you are like myself, who still has their job, you know, I can embrace it mm-hmm. because financially I'm, I'm doing all right. I work part time and when I'm not working, I'm doing other things. I'm riding my bike, mm-hmm. you know, I'm out in the yard gardening. Mm-hmm. So there is a certain level of privilege that I know that I have that allows me to in, in my opinion, more comfortably embrace the new norm. Right, right. Or, or to the opposite, Anthony and I rode down to the beach a couple of Sundays ago, just right. you know, just to ride out. Right. And there were a group of people who were not wearing masks because that is not their live reality, mm-hmm. you know. And I was talking to my cousin yesterday, and we were kind of laughing and joking. But he said to me, he said, "I literally counted the number of black people that were wearing their masks." 
versus other people who were not wearing their masks. Mm -hmm. And we have to, you know, again, because we have a lot of health issues. Again, we have issues with health access and resources. Mm -hmm. We're working in certain communities where, you know, where we're we're exposed because we're working on the front line. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of have to wear a mask. So we have to adjust to this new normal because it's our lived reality, right? you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. it, and it's unfortunate at the same time that for us, unfortunately, you know, the anvil has to fall, mm-hmm. right? I'm talking about for, for black people, mm-hmm. people of color, right? The anvil has to fall, right? It's like, well, I ain't wearing no mask. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, dude, you got diabetes, exactly. you know, you got, right. heart, you know, you got heart issues, you got mm-hmm. high blood pressure, you got hypertension, right. you know what I mean? You know, you got bad knees. I mean, whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? Gout. And, right, you got gout, <laughs> the gout, give it a title. The gout. You got the gout, right? You know, right. and so, but it's like, no, I ain't gonna do that, right? right. And and it, it speaks to the, the larger issue mm-hmm. of our condition and our health position and how we take care of ourselves initially. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of rolls into um, the same kind of, mm-hmm. you know, places, the same kind of um, thought process. I think, I think today I had, I had to, we had to celebrate the life of, of a member here at New Calvary and it was a graveside service, mm-hmm. right? And it was the first one I had ever done. Really? Um, yeah, I'd never wow. done a graveside before. Um, and so it was like, and they were like, yo, 30 minutes. Right. And I was like, 30 minutes for everything? <laughs> you know what I mean? Going off. You know, it's the black church. Do you understand? Right. You know, and it was crazy because I went, I went, I went to, um, I went to the, you know, the place, the, the cemetery office. And I say, hey, you know, hey, I'm Reverend Small here to do the funeral. He pointed to the spot. And usually you can see because it's an awning or something like that. So I said, well, is there an awning there, sir? So I can see where it is. He said, no awnings, no seats, no tents. Right? Is in other words, ain't no, ain't no, we ain't right. making nobody comfortable. Right, right. right? Everybody's going to be in. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, right. and I was like, yo, this mm-hmm. might be the thing. Right. You know, right. for a little while. This right. might be the thing. You know, um, we have, I, I mean, um, talking about the faith piece, we have had um, seven people transition mm-hmm. uh New Calvary. None of them have been COVID-19 people, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I was telling a colleague of mine, I was like, that's a heck of a thing to pray for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, God, thank you that, you know, nobody is COVID-19, but right. they still gone. I mean, right. it's, a, right. it's an incredible right. Right. <laughs> conundrum of, of thought. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, mm-hmm. it's a real interesting place to be in, you know, that sure. these lives mm-hmm. are still, mm-hmm. you know, have transitioned, but it's not what everybody else is, mm-hmm. right. you know, is, is talking about. Um, Monique uh, Anderson Adams said, we can't survive if we try to live, um, uh, the life that we live prior to the onset of the virus, mm-hmm. you know, we have to really look mm-hmm. at, you know, how we shift and how we, you know, change this thing around. Yeah. Um, so, so let me ask you, uh, traditionally in times of crisis, uh, what role do you think, um, faith plays, uh, in Corona as you make this connection, you know, as, as you, as, as faith leaders, mm-hmm. right. Um, when people come to you, and say, what the hell? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or what the hell? Or, right, or, right. or what the world? Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, what kinds of, you know, responses or connections are you giving um, that are practical? Because one of the things that I, when I say, and I don't say that to insult you, I say that because, you know, New Calvary really, really does believe in the application mm-hmm. Of theology, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't have that pie in the sky kind of thing around here. We, you know, people want to know how to live. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I want to live with the faith I have. And so, um, how do we? How do? How do you all? How have you been? You know, kind of ministering Mm -hmm. um, to to individuals. One of the things that I've been very intentional about, and people online can attest, those who have called the church, is about checking in with the people who call. Right. You know, w- when a person calls into the to the church, whether it's to ask about tithing or to ask about whatever they want to ask about, part of the conversation, even though they may be ready to rush off the phone, is how are you doing? You know, how, how are you managing? And not so much how are you doing, but how are you managing this? Is there anything that you need? What are you standing in need of? 
not that prayer doesn't change things, but mm-hmm. do you need, and, and what's a beautiful thing about New Calvary is we had trustees that bought uh, in, in a toilet paper mm-hmm. in case they were seniors or someone that called and said, hey, I need toilet paper mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. We had a person that was like, let's get a, get, let's get a part and be a part of the, um, the, the ministry with people who are in need of, of groceries and people to go pick up groceries for them. And so we have things in place so that when people call, we can connect with them in a more meaningful way. And that's one of the things that I think, as far as you talk about the practical side of it, is that we just need to be intentional about the conversation mm-hmm. uh, and not let it be surface and pie in the sky. How you doing? I'm all right. Well, bless God. I'm, you know, that, that doesn't yeah. serve right. because when you hang up, I'm still broken or, right. and exactly. it, even, and even, at, even after the conversation we have, it might not adjust my immediate situation, right. but it may give me a tool that will help me to get through to the next right. phase, mm-hmm. the next point or whatever the case may be. Right. And that's what I've been doing. Just, just connecting, mm-hmm. communicating. Mm-hmm. One, I think one of the other things is not trying to fix it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, because sometimes we can, you know, naturally we want to hurry up and fix it or tears make us uncomfortable. And that's one of the things that, you know, we learn in chaplaincy, you know, try not to rush and give someone tissue, you know, mm-hmm. just let them cry down and sit in that moment. Um, I think you preached a sermon a couple of Sundays, a few Sundays ago about sitting in it, mm-hmm. you know, and so being present to listen, being present to just, you know, offer kind words, but not trying to fix it for that person and letting them know whatever it is that you're feeling, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like whatever the anxiety is, whatever the thought is around whatever they're dealing with, that that moment is, it's okay. And it it gets better. You know, Mm -hmm. there is glory after this. We keep saying that, Mm -hmm. but there is glory after it when you may not see it now, but it is coming, but our job is not to, to fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, And I'll say for me, it's about listening and figuring out what the real problem is Mm -hmm. because for many of us COVID is out here Mm -hmm. right we have not lost anybody Mm -hmm. from the COVID we don't know anybody who actually has it um we're still working Mm -hmm. and so the idea is what's what's really going on is it the loss of control is it the loss of your routine are you Mm -hmm. grieving your previous life Mm -hmm. so as I'm listening what is the 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 underlying you know problem here right Mm -hmm. right that's good that's good. I think um, um, what Sister Moravia Reese said, I appreciate the opportunity to vent briefly to, <laughs> to Minister B when I called yesterday. <laughs> uh, so to your point, I'm just backing you up. He was there. He was there. Um, the, so so in, in light of that, um, how, I mean, and it would have to be um, kind of different as well, right? Mm-hmm. Circumstantial and situational. Right, Reverend Calvin Brown says, protecting the peace of our senior saints, what do you say to them? Mm-hmm. Right? Because, you know, they're like, hey, you know, mm-hmm. the, the the news says right. mm-hmm. today, and let me be specific, the news says today right, mm-hmm. that I'm exactly. one of the most susceptible. Right. Mm-hmm. right, I'm at high risk. Because, you know, mm-hmm. this thing changes and, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. yep. and I, exactly. I, don't, I don't like to operate in conspiracy right. theories, but it's like, <laughs> you know, I, I find myself talking like Carolyn Brown Ferguson, my mother, you know, she used to watch the TV. She'd be like, they don't know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I find myself, you know, I'm like, right. you know, this thing is anything and everything, mm-hmm. you right. know, when they right. want it to be. So, mm-hmm. so, but dealing with, you know, saints and, you know, seniors or whatever, mm-hmm. um, it, it's funny because the wisdom of our, our senior saints is they're going to listen. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, I ain't seen a thing you say. You know what I'm right. They say stay inside. I'm, stay I'm, I'm gonna inside. be right here. Right. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Um, but it, it, but uh, to Reverend Brown's point, is there anything different that you share with you know um, seniors? Yeah. One of the things I really enjoy about the senior population is what it means to remember. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in engaging our senior population, a lot of times when I do get a chance to speak to them or we get a chance to discuss whatever's going on, it's about the beauty of remembering. Mm -hmm. And the idea is nine times out of 10, when we engage in conversation, we can remember when God delivered us out of something Mm -hmm. else. And so the idea that becomes a matter of now, instead of it being an anxiety inducing thing for me as a golden age person, I can attest to what I've seen God do in the past, Mm -hmm. over the past 80 years, 70 Mm -hmm. years, whatever the case may be. And I'm excited to see how God is going to fix it. I'm going to follow what they say. Like I'm going to stay in the house. I ain't leaving the house. And and I'm only going to go out to get the toilet paper and the paper towels. But by the same token, I understand that I serve a deliverer. 
Right. And so right. I'm gonna right. I'm interested to see how God's gonna deliver me out of this. And that's not mm-hmm. saying that works for everybody, oh, yes. but a lot of times engaging in that dialogue of well, tell me about you know, or mm-hmm. what does it mean, or the faithfulness. I think that's one of the things that is being really shown with the golden age population of New Calvary is just how faithful they are to the missio day, to the mission mm-hmm. of God, what mm-hmm. it is that God has called and planted in this space, mm-hmm. how faithful they still are to their tithes, how faithful mm-hmm. they still are mm-hmm. to right. coming and getting their envelopes, how faithful they are in mm-hmm. calling ahead before they come to drop off their tithes. Right. And those things, although they might not seem like much to many, mm-hmm. to them it's very meaningful right. and very purposeful. And keeping them connected what gives them purpose, right. I think, is the, is the goal, mm-hmm. dealing with golden, working with golden age population. Right. I think with the seniors, um, you know, like for my dad, um, talking to him the other day and um, with the shooting of the young man, Ahmad, and he mm-hmm. said, I didn't want to watch it, mm-hmm. you know? Right. Um, right. And I was like, wow, okay. And I was like, you didn't? And he was like, no. I, I, he was like, because I know I'm going to get upset. Yeah. And so th- those are the things that we have to do to protect our peace, you know, mm-hmm. being informed and not inundated with all that's going on. Uh, but then I appreciate, like you said, the seniors where they know how to go and watch the Westerns. And even though they've seen it 50 mm-hmm. times, they will watch the same one over and over again. Bonanza. And, right. And now mm-hmm. I'm sitting here like, oh, okay. You know, I don't have to be on my cell phone. I don't have to do this. Getting back to those basics, you know? And so there are some things that, how do you navigate this whole COVID-19 and protecting your peace is to do the things that you enjoy and mm-hmm. love and getting back to that, walking in your yard, gardening, you know, cutting the grass, whatever it is, but just doing those basics versus, you know, millennials, you know, we're kind of like all into TikTok and, mm-hmm. you know, I was always on the go. And so now I'm just like, okay, I got to find something to do and I'm reading, you know, mm-hmm. the things that I normally would do, you know, just kind of getting back to that. So that's what I would say to the seniors, protect your peace and, you know, don't become overwhelmed by it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, and it's, you know, it's one more stress, you know, to be added, mm-hmm. you know, um, to the other stresses, you know, you bringing up Ahmaud Arbery, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, right. you know, without question, you know, James Baldwin says to be black and to be slightly conscious is to be in a constant or perpetual state of rage. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what right. I'm saying? And so exactly. to understand a little bit of how the system works, right. you know, you can get, you know, it's a pressure cooker kind of a right. thing. Mm-hmm. And so for this to be added to it, mm-hmm. you know, right. it's just right. another kind of level to what happens and what's mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So let's, let's push real quick just for a few more moments. In what ways um, do you think people can find peace? Uh, and balance in this season. I mean, that's what this is all about. So what ways do you think people can really kind of get to a place where they find their peace or maintain that little <laughs> bitty piece of peace that I need? So well, I think, desperately. I, I think Sharice talked a little bit about it, uh, that it's about finding things that you enjoy. Uh, what's going to bring you joy? I know for me, uh, club quarantine has been bringing me great joy yes. just to, you know, listen to the DJ play songs that I have not heard in a long time yes. yeah. because those kind of songs, you know, aren't really played on the radio that mm-hmm. much. Right. So, you know, I've really enjoyed music. Um, I've also enjoyed gardening. Right. So I've been out there pruning my yard okay. and I know, uh, <laughs> cutting down, uh, bushes and, you know, and I, I, did, I didn't know that I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm mm-hmm. about to start my own little garden and everything. Mm-hmm. So uh, just finding things that bring me joy mm-hmm. um, has, has definitely uh, allowed me to keep my peace mm-hmm. in the midst of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I was just going to echo that. It, one of the things in trauma that we've always dealt with is finding what what brings you, we, we, we stay, we steer away from saying like spiritual, spirituality and things of that nature. So we'll ask people, what is it that you connect with that brings you peace? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so as, as Nicole was talking about those joys that you have that bring you peace, but also looking at those things that challenge you. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and we particularly talking about the golden ages population, right. the senior saints, what is that going to keep me fresh and on my toes? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So is it about doing crossword puzzles? Is it about, you know, maybe going out, and, and finding a new path to walk in my neighborhood or or engaging in a way that is doing some type of exercise where I can stay in my chair but still be able to do breathing exercises right. or whatever that case may be and finding out ways that will be able to uh, challenge me in a way that will grow me mm-hmm. and also allow me to still find some type of balance and some type of peace mm-hmm. in my life. That's mm-hmm. one of the things I think is really important. Well, well um, for women's ministry, shameless plug, 
on <laughs> On May 23rd, we're going to do a women's edition and talk about, you know, how to still, you know, accomplish our goals for 2020. And so, you know, I kind of had this running joke, like throw 2020 away. Yep. It seemed like everything was at a loss, like, you know, and it took Minister Yvette Brown Moore to kind of remind us as women, it is not at a loss. And so one of the things to protect your peace would be going back to that list that you created at the top of January and saying, what are my goals? You know, what is it that I said I was going to do? What is it that I'm setting out to accomplish? And still see God moving in that, you know, mm-hmm. um, what is it that, you know, God poured in my spirit, starting a business, getting healthy, connecting with family, whatever it is, but being able to do that. So, mm-hmm. okay. All right. Um, you know, uh, our watch, our virtual watchers are dropping a whole lot of things. Sister Phyllis John said, um, you know, stay connected is one way to find mm-hmm. the peace. Stay connected to people, you know, mm-hmm. text, emails, Absolutely. you know, calls, making sure everybody is okay. Um, Renita Bland said communication, checking on others, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it really does evolve or create a new kind of way to do ministry right. um, in that regard. Um, Sister Alexis Wiggins says, uh, uh, Alexis Savage Wiggins says, I'm walking a fine line between being informed and being overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and that is so true. And, and yeah. we have to take control. That's a very good yeah. point. We have to take control over what it is that we allow in our spirit. Absolutely. Just like when we talk about in the yeah. spiritual realm, how we mm-hmm. allow people to speak over us or say things over us. Mm-hmm. And so we might need to say, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give myself 30 minutes, whether it's the nightly news or whether yeah, it's the right. And that's yeah, going to be right. it. I'm not going to watch CNN yeah. on yeah. that automatic because yeah. I'll find myself in that place of being overwhelmed. Being mm-hmm. I might need to do. There's one trustee that I love. Whenever we have meetings, she always is like, now y'all know, 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy coming on. Exactly. And so it's like we need to find those connections that give yeah. us some levity. Exactly. And, 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 and that way we can kind of decompress. Exactly. So, exactly. so yeah, definitely. And don't I, forget I the laugh. Like, and like, yes. There's, just, you yes. know, there are some moments where, you know, if you're on social media or whatever, just laugh. You know, find a good movie, mm-hmm. comedy, mm-hmm. just laugh. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. just have fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to ask. Uh, in the last few minutes we have, I'm gonna um, um, connect to two questions. Um, okay. okay. I'm gonna push you all a little bit. Okay, I'm, I'm taking this pastoral <laughs> authority. I'm gonna push a little okay. bit. Um, what um, in in terms of spirit, and we know how again, you know, we know how we do things here at New Calvary. Um, theologically, where do you li- land? Um, in COVID space. Um, Sister D. Van said, this isn't the first time God has had to show us better than he could tell us mm. since we're not listening. Mm. Right? It's an interesting place, you know. I mean, so theologically, you know, what is this? Is this that's that's a that's a push, right? I mean, is this is this I mean I I, 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 I don't I mean, you know, we don't necessarily have a theological um position of, of fire and brimstone. Right. I mean, that's not really where right. we, we live. <laughs> right. But um there is a justice to the world, right? Mm-hmm. Um Charles Booth Charles Booth and this is I mean if this is just a, a a thought that popped in my mind because this is affecting the globe. But Charles Booth said years ago, may he rest in peace, um I heard him preach, he said, if God does not punish America, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, you know, but there there is a justice in, in the world is what I'm saying. And so to the theological question, uh, I want to piggyback, I want to add to what role does the church play um, in helping individuals to main this, maintain the sense of peace in this time and for the future? Um, and I think that's, you know, we, we can, we can you know, hit it real fast. Uh, as my boy James Brown said, we can hit it and quit it. Um, and then kind of like the next time, let that kind of be like the takeoff, mm-hmm. you know, the church's place in this. Okay. Um, but you know, so just just let me let me you know give them give them a give them a bumper. <laughs> <laughs> give them a bumper uh, for next time. That's an inside joke, y'all. Know <laughs> so yeah, give them give them give them a little something, something you know. Well, I guess I'll go first. Um, so I am not a this is God's doing type of. <laughs> Uh, theologian. Um, 
I cringe at those conversations uh, because they're really, really tough for me um, to, to say that uh, this is God's doing and God is punishing us, you know, for the sins of the and, world. And, and, and I'm not saying that's what she said. No, no, said. no, I'm just saying I'm that, just, that like, is not where I am. Okay? <laughs> right, let's let's right, be clear, right, that is right, right, not right, where I am. Those conversations right. make me cringe. Um, I am more of a God allows this right. and that there are there are people and positions that could have done more in mm-hmm. preventing uh, the COVID-19 mm-hmm. from spreading as it, as it, as it, as it has. What do you mean? Obama? This is Obama's fault. Well, of course. Right? <laughs> right. This is Obama's right? fault. Well, well, you know. That's for you, d This is Obama's fault. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, so I am a, a, a God allows this and, and um, because it is occurring to us, what are we learning as individuals and as communities? Mm-hmm. Um, how can we we better yeah. ourselves yeah. because this is happening to us? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, there is there is a lot to learn from. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, for uh, seven last things, I've mm-hmm. had the pleasure of preaching, um, and the word that I preached was. Um, Woman, behold your son. Mm-hmm. Son, behold your mother. Mm-hmm. And the question that I had in the sermon was, who's your mama? Mm-hmm. And it's interesting mm-hmm. how <laughs> when it was just dealing with mamas in China, mm-hmm. it wasn't a big deal. Right. Or when it was just dealing with mamas in Italy, it really wasn't a big deal. And how culturally when things start to affect us and it gets closer and closer to home, but then once it hits Seattle, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, you know, we started taking it a little bit more seriously. And then, oh my God, Chicago and New York and you know Louisiana and these 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 metropolitan spaces. And then it started affecting us at home. And so I I often struggle with the idea of when does it become important. Mm-hmm. And so the idea of not necessarily a chicken's coming home to roost, which is Bible, right? But, <laughs> right. That's Bible. but that's, 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 that's Bible. That's but it's also a situation where, as Nicole talked about, what is God allowing us to get out of this situation, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. talked about trusting me, but now you got to put your money where your mouth is. You talked about faith in me. Right. So is this allowing me the opportunity to exercise mm-hmm. my faith in what God mm-hmm. really can do and what God is doing? And, and that this is outside of my control. Because, mm-hmm. right. you know, our our, our faith, right. our faith right. calls, particularly as people of color, right. is, Lord, just give me the strength to get to work every day and I'm going to take care of my, you right. know, Lord, right. just give me the strength that I can do. And so this is a situation where we have right. to truly rely on yeah. what God is doing. And so I think that that's kind of where where mm-hmm. I the, the church's responsibility or where the church's challenge is mm-hmm. is how to allow us to be in that space mm-hmm. and not try to make up something mm-hmm. you know not try to make up something to make us feel comfortable right. but be uncomfortable or find a way to be comfortable in the dissonance mm-hmm. of what God is saying or not mm-hmm. saying in right. the moment you know right. I was I'm reading a book on the Lutheran Church uh, at, I'm a student at Seattle University and doing a reading a book just today just this weekend yeah, book yeah Seattle University <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but but reading a book about the uh, the Lutheran Church and in its founding, talking about it talked about public lament, mm-hmm. and it talked about the importance of the public leader being able to lament publicly, mm-hmm. and what does that do, and how you are empowered when le- people are allowed to see leadership lament. It gives them permission to wail at the wall. It gives them permission right. to be able to be honest in where they are in their journey right. and, and be okay in that space. And I think that that's yeah. part of the church's yeah. responsibility. Like Obama and, and Trayvon. Remember, he he said, you know, Trayvon could have been my son, right. and that mm-hmm. was very powerful for right. our communities. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. You, you, you. Well, I was gonna piggyback. I was gonna say, you know, something similar to what Reverend Harris had said in terms of. Now we stand the sovereignty of God. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we are in control or we like to be in control. And so now we have to sit back and realize that some things we don't know the answer and we may never know the answer. And it is okay, you know, Mm -hmm. for us to not know. But I think, again, the church's responsibility, I think, is what we um, what we do here at New Calvary already. We have a responsibility to care for humanity. Right. You know, um, to care for our neighbor, our fellow man, um, and still deal with the social issues of the community. There's still voting taking place. There's still, you know, black bodies being killed. And so there's still this, right. you know, um, need as the church for us to right. do and responsibility and to do ministry creatively. And so what does that look like? So. Yeah. I, I think, um, I think, 
it's it's a both and. Um, mm -hmm. I I I don't necessarily. I th I think it's a time to yes be still, mm -hmm. in some ways. But I also think it's an opportunity for innovation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not just about, yo, well, we're going to see what God does. I think God is saying, well, what y'all going to do? do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. How do you do this differently? How do you create yeah. differently? Mm -hmm. How do you step, do ministry differently? Right. How do mm -hmm. you relate to people differently? Mm -hmm. um, Sister Emily Jones says, do you believe God is angry? And if yes, does he? Uh, do what does he do to get our attention? There's no please explain. I don't think God is angry. Mm -hmm. um, and God does not have to do ill will towards us right. to get our attention. Right, right, right. So, so I, so I don't think God is angry. What, I, what God might be trying to do, mm -hmm. right, is cause us to think differently. Right, right. to, to, right. Your, to, to right. be in different relationships. Exactly. To, under, to, to go, to go deeper in relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not about mm -hmm. angry, but you know, to, how do we operate and work in this circumstance? To, to, to Heidi Farrell's point, yeah. the role of the church has not changed. Right. right. Heidi Farrell says uh, the role of the church is to service, support, Absolutely. and guide. Right. Absolutely. Right. And so the, our, our assignment hasn't That's changed. Right. Right. Even though the conditions have changed, exactly. the assignment is still the exactly. same. Right. So how do we innovatively still continue to service, right. support, and right. guide, right. whether it be through Facebook Live, mm -hmm. whether it be through right. you know mm -hmm. Zoom meetings, right. whether it be through whatever, right. the, whether it be through a park and praise, you will celebrate New Calvary, eighty three <laughs> right, to right, twenty four. Right. That those it it it's that it's, it's right. just that not losing sight about what is the mission and what is the goal. The exactly. Missio Day. What yeah. is the right. mission of yeah. God? Yeah. I think I think mm -hmm. that um, I think at the beginning of this, um, I preached the sermon when you run out of excuses, mm -hmm. right? And we're at that place. And I think this is this is good. This is the bumper for next week. I think the tease <laughs> is is that the church is really now forced. Mm -hmm. um, to look at how to do things differently yeah. because we've been so comfortable doing things the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, this is going to force us to look at how we do ministry because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm going to kind of leave it right here. Um, just, I mean, I'm grateful that we're able to create worship but worship ain't only minister, the only minister. Right. 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 right, right, right. So the challenge is how else do we do this? How right. else do we connect? How else do we help? Right. Um, I mean, because you're talking about, you're talking about opportunities to help community now mm -hmm. right right like like parents are running into walls right. trying to teach their kids <laughs> right you know what i'm saying i mean it's so, right. I'm, so i'm just i'm just putting that there right. there's bunches of ways to do that right. Right. um and so we're i think i think it's important for us mm -hmm. to really kind of look at how we do that and how we right. put that together and so um i'm grateful for you guys, you know, kicking this, uh, and we're going to kick it again next week. Um, we're going to, um, you know, uh, continue this conversation about, uh, protecting our peace. Uh, we are indeed grateful for Reverend Sharice Parker Freeman, uh, for the Reverend Dr. Nicole McDonald, and for the Reverend Byron L. Harris. See, there you go. I messed up the picture. I messed up the picture. <laughs> messed up the picture. All right. But uh, please be mindful. We do want to just let you know uh, that we are excited about everything that's taking place in regards mm -hmm. to our church anniversary. Uh, as we prepare for that week, we are going to be worshiping uh, and praised and in the parking lot. And so uh, we got some information out on that. So just be mindful about that. That takes place on the 24th. And we are going to be on the radio, y'all. There's too many radio stations to name. It's just a whole bunch of them. Uh, I don't want to get a wrong call sign, but there's a lot of them up there. Uh, I want to thank uh, Sister Tanya uh, Riddick for shouting that out and putting that up there. But we are uh, grateful for that. And... I'm going to, she posted a scripture a little while ago, um, and so I read it, so I'm going to just kind of uh, end with that. Uh, this is Bible study, technically, so we want we don't, we don't want y'all to say what no Bible mentioned. Um, so, John chapter 14, verse 12, um, translation is this, this, I don't know, what, what translation is this? Oh, okay. Um, the message, um, this, it just ain't, I don't know what this is. This is, oh, this is the New King James, so I apologize already. Um, <laughs> this has, John 14, 12 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the work that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. 
And so we want to just thank you all for sharing with us. We will see you next week, 7 p.m. Tell your friends, as they like to say, tell a phone, tell a friend, tell a Negro. <laughs> Calvary is virtual. We love you. We're going to see you next time. Be good. Peace. Peace.